we can definitely open up the, the floor to questions. Um, yeah. I feel like in between all of you, you already kind of answered, gave the answer to the problem, and it's some mixture of the example of the class you gave or the things you said to the teacher. And uh, my question is why you have the frontiers of science, which I haven't taken, but I've heard. What I've heard has me scared away from it because it's just something that seems to be difficult and we need all the memorization, all the stuff that you said can get you away. Why don't we create a core class which counts as a science requirement, which is similar to the model you, you are running there or something you suggested where we tell people about the, the concept of science without them having to memorize all these little factories and do the math, just so they start to understand basic physics or uh, environmental processes, things like that, without having this, this high bar of being able to reproduce the, 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 the equations and you know, all the math that scares people. You know, I think if we had a course that had bits, and it might be a year-long course, or it might be two courses, that had bits of what now goes on in Frontiers, hmm. bits of the kind that Professor Valentini has just described, she seems to be absolutely terrific as a way of, of, of getting people inside various kinds of scientific processes, bits about standards of evidence and historical stuff about how um, how difficult it was, for example, for Maya, uh, or uh, for plate tech, or for continental drift to get accepted, and bits about really great ideas, really exciting big ideas in science. You know, think of the chemical bond, uh, think of uh, the electromagnetic field, think of particulate inheritance and natural selection, think of, uh, of plate tectonics. Think of the concept of infinity. We want to get some math in there. I, th I, I started out as a mathematician. Um, you know, and I went to a university, by the way, that into the 20th century called its course in science the natural philosophy <laughs> tripod. I have to go back. But I mean, it seems to me we need all of these ingredients. And the trouble, the trouble at the moment is that we've concentrated on one of these, which has been given actually with immense skill by the pioneers, people like David Helfand and Darcy Kelly and Don Hood. Um, but I think we need all of these things and much, much less emphasis on exercises in uh, you know, solving toy problems and memorization. And the course is under a second review. It will have uh, on the review committee some external academics as well as people from within Columbia and people who, who both agree and disagree with the current structure. And to be as diplomatic as possible, I can say that I'm not entirely disagreeing with your concerns about the course, even as I want to give the current instructors the opportunity to make the version it got as good as it can be. My hope is that five years from now, it will look a lot more like what you've described than what it looks like well, I, But I, in fairness, I think we need to move there I, slowly because I of the fact that I have to put my hat on because I want to take it off. You're putting a different hat? To, no, to, to the people who, who, um, who actually Oh, absolutely. We put so much effort. Thing. And now the question is how we improve it. Absolutely. And I think the, the other challenge for Frontiers, which I think is very different than what you encounter in the, let's say, Lit Hum, which is the one that people take starting out, the, the concepts and the kind of uh, grammatical fluency you need come more easily with learning a natural language when you're reading the, when you need to be able to do, understand what goes on in literature humanities. And I think the challenge still, even for the faculty, is their assumption that there will still be something that's crucial to the grammar, if I can use that phrase of science, that they need their Carl students Pierce to appreciate. Use it. Okay. Carl yeah. So that they, they can um, feel that their students have really left with a grasp of what science is all about. I happen to share your sense that maybe they don't need as much as we think, and we could rely a lot more on 
find science writing, and there is a lot of it. And we, but I, I think there, we need to be ready to integrate that more fully into the course than many of our current faculty have been. Knowing, knowing a lot of facts won't be really helpful to you as a citizen if you can't address a simple, relatively simple, pro it's complicated, but simple at the same time. You're probably familiar with the Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Volt, which are plug-in, well, the Chevy Volt's not quite, but it almost is, a plug-in electric vehicle. The Nissan Leaf is. It has no uh, propulsion source except the energy stored in the battery and an electric motor. Okay. The EPA has given these vehicles certain mileage ratings, 200 miles per gallon, 600 miles per gallon, 99 miles per gallon. How do you, how would do you, does, do any of you know how to assess the, the, the validity or the significance or the meaning of any of those terms? Okay, we this it was all very much related to the genetically modified genetically modified uh, corn. Um, scientific literacy means being able to address the problems in your life, and in in all the students in my class know how to assess whether an electric vehicle makes sense or not, and almost all of them will come to the conclusion that it makes no sense at all in, if, if the power plant that generates the electricity is, is fired with coal because the overall thermodynamic efficiency, and that's an important word, the overall thermodynamic efficiency is actually lower in the case of, in the case of the electric vehicle and it only is beneficial if you actually produce electricity from a source other than burning fossil fuels. No matter what fossil fuel you burn, it's still worse, it's worse than an internal combustion engine in your car. And those mileage figures are computed by neglecting the energy the vehicle uses that comes from electricity. So it's, it, it violates the first law of thermodynamics. I mean, it's a, a clear <laughs> violation. Sorry, I, that sounds condescending on my part. I don't mean it to be. Okay. But people have agreed Agencies have agreed on how to report the performance of the vehicle that is to, to any reasonable person misleading. You probably think 200 miles per gallon is better than 50 miles per gallon. You think that a, a, a Chevy Volt is better than a, better than a Toyota Prius. It isn't. A Toyota Prius is much better than a Chevy Volt. You won't get $7,000 back from the government from buying a Prius, but you will get it back for buying a Volt, Chevy Volt. Somehow, it's important to all of us in whatever we're doing, what you, me, any of us, is to help develop in ourselves and others the ability to, an to address and answer and deal with questions like this that come up again and again in our everyday lives. And it, you don't have to know much to do this. You just have to know a way of addressing problems. And I think that's the most important thing we can teach anyone is how, do sci how does science, that's, opposed, that's different from scientists, how does science that propose to approach a problem. How do we how do we resolve the questions? How do we answer the questions? I think that's the most important thing we can actually teach. Go ahead. Um, you've all talked about the, a lot of the applications of science in society today, but uh, I was wondering if you had any kind of thoughts on um, the teaching of the philosophy of science. I know we read about Hume in um, CC, but say Popper or knowing about Ockham's razor and why science works, why is science reliable in some sense, um, going more into that. Well, it's interesting, a fair amount of, of that actually is taught in the core, more than, more than I actually had thought about prior to, to thinking about this event. Um, but philosophy of science is science, and that's the one challenge, as important as Professor Kitcher and I will think it is, and as rich a view of science as it can give you, it is a different animal. And I, here's, here's the worry that some people who want you to be, to have scientific literacy will have, that you're not gonna get from reading um, philosophy of science. It's valuable in activity and a form of, of intellectual um, commitment that, as it can be. I would just, I would just put that out there. Well, that's, that, that's not privileging application of both science that might be both basic science and applied science. It's saying that science is still different from philosophy of science. 